All right, folks, welcome to Smart Living. I'm super excited. I've been hunting this man down for a while. JD, who is the owner of Recycle City here in the Valley. You've been around for what, 10 years or so? Yeah. And so basically what you do is you figured out a way that you have a program where you develop relationships with people in our community by picking up compost from people who compost for you. And then also you have an interesting way of concept with this Recycle City of basically doing all the things that help farmers go out of business, you take care of that expense for them and help them thrive in the Valley. So welcome to the show, JD, and thank you so much for taking time. I know you're a very busy guy. And we also should talk about this new partnership with the Mill the Food Grinder. But first, let's talk about Recycle City and what it's all about and what got you inspired. Well, uh, I grew up in Minnesota, um, graduated in 2004 from high school and moved to Arizona to uh -huh. go to school at ASU. And at ASU, I got a finance degree from the W.P. Carey School of Business, um, a small business entrepreneurship certificate, and a minor in philosophy. And it was 2009 when I was graduating, and uh, there were no jobs. So I asked my counselor, like, you know, what do you think? <laughs> and he said, well, the school of sustainability, ASU had just started they it. They just started that, yeah. It was like the first school in the nation. Mm -hmm. um, and he told me, about it and I said well that sounds like the future um, so he told me I needed 18 credits to get a whole nother bachelor degree so I was you know I wasn't gonna find a job at the moment <laughs> so, so you're like let's do it yeah so I did it and then oh, in wow. the school of so sustainability I focused on agriculture okay um, I had begun getting into like healthy eating during college and stuff like that but then when I started going to the school of sustainability you know, I focused all my studies on food and agriculture, and then I came out uh, really wanting to be a local farmer. Okay, mm -hmm. and obviously you didn't. <laughs> no, so I was a, uh, during college, I worked, you know, had a couple jobs mm -hmm. working throughout college, and one of them was as a golf caddy at the Silverleaf Golf Club. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I caddied there from 2005 all the way to 2017. Okay. Um, I did not catch you as a golfer, but go ahead. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> um, the people I would caddy for, they would say, hey, JD, you know, what do you what do you want to do? You know, you have two degrees and everything. And I was like, I really want to be a small farmer. And I remember them all, everyone said, that is a terrible idea. <laughs> um, and one person, their son was a professor in agriculture. I spoke to them on the phone and he said, JD, like, I know a bunch of people like you small urban farming is a lifestyle it's not a business um, even if you're the best vegetable grower of all time you can't sell and he went through it and he said you know you can't sell onto wholesale because you can't compete on price food service the consistency of the menu food costs even if there is a passionate restaurant they're probably working with a local farm already and you can cross your fingers, bring your stuff to a farmer's market. If, yeah. you, if you sell half of what you bring there, you're out all that cost to produce that other half. And I said, yeah, that makes a lot of sense, you know? And I went to the farmer's markets, talked to the farmers. And so you were believing true. this, like you all did all true. the research. To all see. true, yeah. Yeah, wow. Mm -hmm. So I didn't become, I didn't go into it. I wanted to work at local farms as well but all the local farms wanted to pay me nine bucks an hour. I had two degrees, you know. Yeah, that's not going to do it. Debt. That wasn't going to work either. So I just kept caddying mm -hmm. at the golf club. And then in 2012, I learned about what's called the five gallon bucket business. Okay. Um, it, it's, uh, it's, you give a household a five gallon bucket, banana peels, coffee grounds, paper right. towels, leftover food go in the bucket. And then on a certain day of the week, somebody like me comes by and exchanges the bucket with a clean one. That food waste and material doesn't go to the landfill. It goes to a community garden, a mm -hmm. local farm or a compost facility, facility. And that had started in Washington, DC. And then a company started in North Carolina. And this is 2010, 2011. And then in 2012, I became aware of this new 
business. I liked it. Like it lit something inside of me. I said, that's how I'm going to sell produce. That was my answer to the professor. And I said, that's how I'll sell produce. Who wouldn't want to buy the produce from the farm their food waste goes? Yeah. You know? And Mm -hmm. I said, I'm in. And I just, you know, started uh, bootstrapping it. Yeah, because I remember actually when I lived over on 16th Street Northern, um, I obviously didn't know that that was you, but I actually had a service where they would come and pick up my, you know, all my food waste. And in exchange, I would get compost for it, like mm-hmm. after so many buckets. So I think that was, that place was called Recycle City, but it was just kind of starting out. It wasn't quite developed. And then how I came about to finding you again was I'm on Instagram. Mm-hmm. And I saw this thing where there was like these food grinder things, these food grinding machines, which kind of like, if you're like me, it's like, I want to do good for the environment, but I don't want to deal with all the ick. I don't want to get my hands dirty, but I still want to do good. I'm one of those people. So I, these mills are great. They're food grinders. They, they exponentially basically heat up your food really quick over 24 hours, grind it down. And it's in the process of making compost. You're not at compost yet because the, the balance between, um, what is it? The meat and stuff like that. And the, 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 uh, the the moisture in there is not there Mm -hmm. but you now go around now the mill has come out with these wonderful devices you have partnered with them and you can go about and pick up the compost for that so we'll get back to that in a second but you know this is how i kind of found you was through this process so this is so cool jd because like literally to meet the person 10 years ago because i was like wait how 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 are you going to make this work but it's a totally sustainable business so how do you make this work picking up people's waste for a living well uh we all pay for our our material to go to the landfill okay yeah. so it's really similar mm-hmm. um we charge a monthly fee to come by your house either every week every other week or even once a month right and then that funds um us buying the trucks us hiring employees insurance uh, paying for the land uh, all the farming equipment etc um and hold on just one second so you had to figure out the math on that like that's a pretty risky mathematical equation you're making because you're dependent on people to play your game mm-hmm. in order for you to cover your costs yeah so it you know for the first many many years um i was losing money <laughs> uh work working you know all, all the time. time taking the money i made from caddying and putting it straight into the business. You were really passionate about this, because seriously. I started this more as an activist, because I yeah. didn't start this in a very uh, thought out financial way. Like mm-hmm. I didn't set set out to make money. Right. I set out to, you know, change, change the, the way system. we do things in this world. Right. Right, that's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. But now you're able to make a living, cover all your costs. How many employees do you have now? 22. <laughs> Jeez, that's mm-hmm. really cool. So I'm one of those people that pay your game. Mm-hmm. So I pay you forty dollars a month, and once a month you come pick up the, the the grounded food that I have. I have a five gallon bucket that gets uh, delivered to me, and usually it takes about a month for me to fill that. And I live in a household of two people, so I pay you forty dollars. Now, out of the forty dollars, I get to use this wonderful mill device. So let's talk about this partnership with the mill, which I think is an incredible partnership for you. Yeah. How did you get this? So uh, a few years ago, uh, Mill was starting. Um, they were founded by the people who started Nest uh, thermostats oh, okay. and, and sold to Google. Oh, and then they worked at Google for a couple years. Um, said, "Hey, you know, I'm not, you know, really changing the world anymore." And they left and started Mill. Okay. And when they were starting, um, the, one of the venture firms tipped them off on what I was doing here in Phoenix. Uh, here in Phoenix, we are the only company that picks up your food waste, compost your food waste ourselves, uses the compost, doesn't sell it. We sell none of the compost we make, and then uses the compost to grow the vegetables on the farm and distributes those vegetables back to your house. This is the only example of that whole circle um, in the whole country, maybe the world. and. You know, some people have taken notice of that. Mm -hmm. I had a decent amount of customers. I had 3,000 customers when I made the partnership with Mm -hmm. Mill. Um, So, you know, they did their homework, reached out to me, got to know me for a year or two. And then in November of last year, 
we set out the partnership where it's only here in the Phoenix Metro. That's the only place this is available where you can get the mail bin, lifetime warranty, have your stuff picked up by us and get a complimentary either farm box or the actual like compost. finished black gold compost for your garden. Every quarter. Every quarter. So you do get something. So I'm helping the environment. I'm not feeling guilty for throwing away all my produce. I don't have to deal with the ick of composting. Right. So you take all that and I'm going to pay $40 a month. And for that $40 a month, I'm going to basically get this thousand dollar mill yep. that's going to grind my food up that has an amazing charcoal filter. Like I put some nasty stuff in it. Mm -hmm. You never smell anything. Right. My kitchen does not smell at all. And then I set it to grind up my food, heat it up. And within 24 hours, it's ground up. I do it overnight. So the process and you barely even hear the machine go. That is a total win-win. Yeah. JD, I'm going to get goosebumps telling you this, but I am honored to meet you. Oh, and it is a big pleasure because you are somebody that took your passion and you figured out how to make a living out of it. <laughs> Jackpot. You. you got it. Now you've got a perfect life. You're going to work for it. Yeah. But your passion and you figured out a way to make a living. And not only that, but you're doing good stuff to help the environment. Like. Mm -hmm. You're on to something, my friend. So that's why I really wanted to get you on the show to talk about that. Now, the other thing that we talked about besides the mail, which by the way, I don't know if they're still doing a free trial, which is yeah. crazy, but they deliver this machine. It comes to UPS. It's so nicely and thoughtfully packed. I don't know if you've ever actually seen it delivered. I have it. But yeah, it's whoever, delivered all the time. Oh my God, whoever thought of the packaging. Yeah, right. So uh, it was so easy <laughs> to unpack this thing. And it was just amazing. But, um, oh, I got a little sidetrack where I was going with this. Oh, the other thing in our conversation, besides the wonderful mail that you have, um, that you've partnered with, is you also said that one of the other things is that you actually have farmers. Like, you do, like, this is what we said at the beginning, was that mm -hmm. you do all the stuff, you put all that at the expense, so farmers can come and farm on your land. Can you explain that to me? Yeah. So, I really wanted to be a farmer yeah. when I graduated. Not even thinking about how hard it is to sell, to start a small farm or be a farmer as a young beginning disadvantaged farmer you got to have capital for land capital for equipment maybe a working capital loan to hire people and make payroll and then hopefully grow a successful crop and sell that crop so the barriers to entry are huge in local small farming yeah um so what i i'm not the farmer I wanted to be but what I've created with the with the revenue from the food waste pickup we're able to pay all the overhead costs of the typical small farm so we're, we're able to pay for the land the water the tractor the implements make all the compost for the farmer buy the extra fertilizer uh, pay for the seed pay the utility bill for the refrigerators buy the refrigerators do all the sales work do all the distribution. Um, so now we partner with beginning young disadvantaged farmer mm -hmm. that have their own LLC. They come onto the property, we charge them zero. They get to begin their, farming, their passion uh -huh. and farming. And when they grow something, we are going to we are going to buy it and share the revenue of what we we sell it for. So we sell it for a dollar, and then we get a little bit of that they get some of that um so that what we're doing with the food waste revenue is we're de-risking small farming we're taking the risk out so the farmer really has no risk they have no loans their only cost is labor so and they know they're going to sell the product at, and they know what price they're going to get because you already have it sold for them right so we are taking on all the risk so now it's going to be easy to have a thriving local food system so, if, if this scales. Right. So where did you get all the capital to buy the land and all that? Like so we you, were leased, broke, you were a broke caddy. <laughs> right. So I started in a backyard and then a woman named Cindy Gentry, who's famous here in the Phoenix area, um, she was running the Tempe Farmers Market and would see me showing up in the morning. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't really move my arms because I was digging so many holes in the backyard doing Bokashi composting. And she uh, noticed that and said, you know, you need some help. Um, and introduced me to this community farm in South Phoenix. So I went from the backyard to the community farm where they had a tractor and a spot 
for me to make the compost. I gave them all the compost. And then about a year later, I started leasing two and a half acres in Levine. Okay. And I was there for a year or two. And then I started leasing the property we're currently at. It's 16 and a half acres. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. And then that lease, we've had it for the last five years. That ends at the end of this year. And a month or two ago, we purchased our first farm. Oh, you bought land. Yeah. Yes, because that's so, sustainable. So it's sustainable when you have your own land. Right. And... Uh, Kind of the the same story like it took me over three years for the bank to give me an auto loan uh -huh. so i was using trucks that i bought for a couple thousand bucks that i had to spend just the same amount of money every month just uh -huh. keeping them going. Right, just to maintain <laughs> so once the bank finally gave me auto loans yeah. like i got i could get new vehicles and that has real you know it's just been a brick by brick step by step it keeps getting better right yeah do you think that your education at ASU helped you? Absolutely. Okay, because I was yeah. like, you know, because I'm like... Immensely. Yeah, because I mean, like, you're, it sounds like, I mean, I just met you, we're having a conversation, it sounds like you've made some, you're growing slow and steady, and you're growing conservatively, which is yeah, how... I've never you, raised money. It's right? been a family and friends bootstrap business. That's so great. Mm -hmm. I really, I really wish you the best of success. So let me ask you a question. What else can I do to help you with the cause that you're doing? Is this good what I'm doing here? Can I do yeah. any more... Uh, cause to action. Is there anything anybody that can do in the community? Do you need more people to sign up for your program? Tell me. We need more people to sign up. Okay. So um, with the mill machine, it makes, it takes out all the fear of uh, diverting oh, food yeah. out of the trash. Yeah. So there's never any smells. There's never any fruit flies. There's never any bugs. None of it. You only have to empty what looks like a really nice trash can once a month so there's no additional work um your trash can doesn't smell anymore right, right. you don't have to take out the trash as much the volume in your trash is going to go down which is going to help um, significantly yeah with with all sustainability initiatives um, okay so we just need more people to sign up to yeah. sign up um and mill mill our city we offer a 30-day yeah, out. which is crazy. And then there's no commitment. Mm -hmm. So if it doesn't work out for you, you're out nothing. And they right. will pick up that mail for you for free. And bottom line is that you're using the mail and you guys are the ones that are going to service it if I have any issues with it. It costs me nothing. Just spend my $40. Absolutely. Yeah, it's yeah. a total win. And, and as things scale, um, you know, like the cost of a computer when it, there was the first computer yeah. was very, very expensive. Right. As more... People. Households get involved, you know, the price is going to come down. There's there's an area here where we are in central Phoenix. It's been the same price since 2013, you know, never raised the price in 11 years, right? So it's killing inflation. Right, 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 that right. $25 in 2013 is, <laughs> it's you know, lot, so right. the service is getting less expensive as we get more people per square mile. So like neighborhood associations, block parties, okay. um, anywhere where myself or somebody on my team can get in front of even a small group of people. I went to a garden club the other day where they brought me into a, a normal uh -huh. house and there was five or six couples Perfect. and half of them, you know, signed up. Oh yeah, this is totally grassroots. I mean, I think this, again, I think this is an amazing program. I think it's amazing what you're doing. You have a huge fan here in the Valley. So Thank Daphne Monroe is a huge fan of JD. So, okay, well, that's great. Listen, I will have all the information. I'm going to wrap this up. I'll have all the information of where you can get a hold of Recycle City, the mill, where you can sign up. I'll have a link on my blog. Just head over to smartshopperdaphne.com. And guys, this is a win-win for our community all the way around. And really, it's 40 bucks. I mean, and now you can take the guilt away and you'll get a nice little produce basket every three months. I love it. Okay, and don't forget, guys, I'm Daphne Monroe, your smart shopper.